A few people have asked me now, hey Steve, what did you do over the Easter break? And I tell them, you know, I just relaxed. That's sort of true. I suppose the real truth is I benchmarked the Radeon RX 7900GRE and GeForce RTX 4070 Super across 58 different game configurations, taking an in-depth look at rasterization, ray tracing, and upscaling performance. So as usual, there is a shipload of data to go over, but before we get into it, Today's video is sponsored by MSI. Thinking of upgrading your monitor? Now is the perfect time, thanks to MSI's stunning new QD OLED gaming monitors. With 4K 240Hz and 1440p 360Hz options, there's something for everyone, whether that's fast-paced competitive gaming on the elite speed of OLED, brilliant HDR gaming on these bright, immersive, well-calibrated displays, or even creator work backed by a three-year OLED warranty. There's tons of connectivity too, including KVM support. I've been very impressed with the performance of these MSI QD OLEDs, and I strongly recommend them as flagship gaming monitors that will satisfy your needs for years to come. Find out more on MSI's new range of QD OLED gaming monitors via the links in the description. Okay, so for this testing, I've used MSRP models and representing the 7900GRE is Gigabyte's Gaming OC, which can be had for $550 US right now. Then for the RTX 4070 Super, we have Gigabyte's Eagle OC, and this model is also available at the MSRP, so $600 US. And that means Nvidia is asking just shy of a 10% premium, so it'll be interesting to see if the GeForce GPU is worth the extra cash. For testing, we're using our Ryzen 7 7800X 3D test system with 32GB of DDR5 6000 CL30 memory on the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master using the latest BIOS revision. So let's go take a look at what we have. First up, we'll take a quick look at Rainbow Six Siege using competitive type quality settings with the medium preset. Here the 4070 Super and 7900 GRE are neck and neck, delivering identical performance at all three tested resolutions. And performance overall was great, there's just no clear winner here. Next we have Counter-Strike 2, again tested using more competitive quality settings. At 1080p the results are CPU limited using the 7800X 3D, but at 1440p the 7900 GRE pulls ahead by a large 20% margin, seen when comparing the average frame rate. Then at 4K, that margin is extended slightly to 22%, as the GRE was good for 283 FPS on average. One of the newest games included in this big benchmark is Helldivers 2, and for this title, I'm using the Ultra preset, as this isn't a competitive shooter, and I think gamers here would appreciate the higher quality visuals. At 1080p, the 4070 Super was 19% faster, then 23% faster at 1440p, and a massive 37% faster at 4K. So without a doubt, the GeForce GPU is offering the best experience in this title. Moving on to Starfield, we find more competitive results. The GeForce GPU was just 7% faster at 1080p with similar results seen at 1440p and then identical performance at 4K. So these are great results for the 7900GRE as they point to it being the better value product. But of course, we have much more to go over. Next up we have Call of Duty Warzone, and again, more competitive results, the 4070 Super managed to edge out the GRE at 1080p, but beyond that performance was near enough to identical. But if we enable upscaling with DLSS for the GeForce GPU and set it to the quality mode, and then FSR for the Radeon GPU, also set to the quality mode, we see that this gives the 4070 Super a slight performance advantage. At 1080p, the 4070 Super was 8% faster, 9% faster at 1440p, and 11% faster at 4K. So not massive margins, but still with upscaling enabled, the GeForce GPU did have a performance and probably visual quality advantage. Next up we have Fortnite, and we'll start with the more competitive type quality settings by using the medium preset. Here just a few percent separates the GRE and 4070 Super at 1080p and 1440p, the Radeon GPU was slightly faster when comparing the average frame rate, while the 4070 Super had the edge for the 1% lows. Then at the 4K resolution, we're looking at comparable performance. But if we enable the epic quality preset using the DirectX 12 mode, the 4070 Super pulls ahead, offering an impressive 20% performance gain at 1080p, and then 11% at 1440p, before the results become nearly identical at 4K. Then, quite surprisingly, if we enable hardware-based ray tracing, the results become very competitive at all three resolutions. 
Remnant 2 appears to play best with the 7900 GRE, though the margins aren't huge, with a mere 7% performance advantage seen at 1080p, 12% at 1440p, and then 11% at 4K. The extra frames at 1440p and 4K will be noticeable though, so a good win here for the GRE. That said, enabling upscaling changes things, and now performance is very similar at 1440p and 4K, with a very slight advantage now going the way of the 4070 Super. The GeForce GPU was also 11% faster at 1080p, though upscaling doesn't work nearly as well as resolution when compared to what we see at 1440p, and in particular, 4K. Horizon Forbidden West is another new game, and this one has some mixed results for us. At 1080p, the 4070 Super was able to deliver 13% more frames than the 7900 GRE, with an average of 117 FPS. And that margin was reduced to 8% at 1440p, before flipping the other way at 4K, handing the GRE a small 7% win. But once again, enabling upscaling does benefit the 4070 Super more, and its limited memory bandwidth. And now the GeForce GPU is seen to be 9% faster at 1080p and 1440p, with an 11% advantage at 4K. Essentially, the 4070 Super saw a 38% uplift with upscaling enabled, whereas the GRE saw just a 16% boost. Moving on to The Last of Us Part 1, we find pretty competitive performance at all three tester resolutions, as the 4070 Super was just 8% faster at 1080p, 5% faster at 1440p, and then 4% slower at 4K. And again, enabling upscaling does further advantage NVIDIA for this matchup, as now the 4070 Super is 14% faster at 1080p, 8% faster at 1440p and 4K. So not massive margins at the higher resolutions, but better for NVIDIA when compared to the native results. Baldur's Gate 3 provides us with more competitive results, especially at 1080p and 4K, as the margin at 1440p did push out to 8%, it's likely that the 7900 GRE would have offered greater performance at 1080p as well, had it not been limited by the CPU. That said, if we enable upscaling, it's actually the 4070 Super that performs best at 1080p, though we are still quite clearly CPU limited here. And this is evident by the fact that the 1080p and 1440p frame rates are very similar. Then at 4K, the performance is identical, so no real winner in this title. Next up we have Avatar, which does enable some level of ray tracing by default, but even so the 7900 GRE does exceptionally well, just nudging out the 4070 Super by a 4% margin at 1080p, 13% at 1440p, and a rather substantial 26% margin is seen at 4K. Enabling upscaling doesn't change too much, the 4070 Super does end up being a mere 3% faster at 1080p. But other than that, the 7900 GRE is back in charge at 1440p, offering 10% more performance and then 16% more at 4K. The GeForce GPU has a minor performance advantage in Assassin's Creed Mirage, delivering around 8% more frames. The difference probably isn't big enough to be noticed though, even at the 4K resolution. Enabling upscaling doesn't change too much here, both GPUs run into a hard CPU limit at 1080p, while the 4070 Super is faster at 1440p and 4K, by up to a 9% margin, so again, not huge. Now we're going to take a look at rasterization and ray tracing performance of a few titles, starting with the Callisto Protocol. Here the 7900GRE has a performance advantage, offering 9% better performance at 1080p, 12% at 1440p and just 7% at 4K. Then, if we enable ray tracing, both GPUs delivered the same performance, which is a bit of a surprise. There's no more than 3 FPS in it at 1080p and 1440p, while the GRE was 14% faster at 4K, though performance for both GPUs wasn't amazing. The Resident Evil 4 results using the prioritized graphics quality preset are neck and neck, so not much more to say here really. And as you'd probably expect, enabling ray tracing does hand the 4070 Super the lead, or at least it does at 1080p and 1440p. Actually, it's really only the 1080p data that's significant. Here, the GeForce GPU is 16% faster. But by the time we hit the 1440p resolution, that margin shrank to just 4% before switching around completely at 4K, where the 7900 GRE ended up being 11% faster. Granted, the RTFX in this title aren't amazing, but then that's true of most titles that support the technology, at least at this point in time. Far Cry 6 doesn't challenge these modern GPUs, and even at 4K, we're looking at frame rates well over 60 FPS. 
The 7900 GRE was up to 7% faster, which isn't a huge margin. And truth be told, performance overall was so strong that you're not going to notice the difference between these two products. Even with ray tracing enabled, performance is still excellent. And again, the 7900 GRE managed to outmuscle the 4070 Super at 4K. Now, for the rest of the games tested, which includes eight titles, I've benchmarked both the rasterization, ray tracing, and upscaling performance. And we'll start with Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. These are the rasterization results using the very high quality preset, and at 1080p, the 4070 Super is 13% faster, 14% faster at 1440p, and then 7% slower at 4K. So again, the Radeon GPU is typically more powerful at 4K. But this is a really bad title for AMD when it comes to ray tracing performance, and we can see that here with the 4070 Super laying waste to the 7900 GRE, offering almost 80% greater performance at 1080p, and then 74% more performance at 1440p. The results do even up at the 4K resolution, though neither GPU is able to deliver acceptable performance, so the results are somewhat invalidated. Enabling upscaling helps the 7900 GRE deliver decent performance at 1440p with 56 FPS on average. It's certainly not amazing, but it's good enough for most to enjoy. That said, the 4070 Super is still offering a massive 36% performance boost with a much more optimized 76 FPS on average. Next up, we have Star Wars Jedi Survivor, and here the Radeon GPU has a very small performance advantage when using the epic quality preset, which is a bit too much for 4K gaming. That being the case, enabling ray tracing doesn't help performance, but even so, the results at 1440p are acceptable, and again, there's really not that much in it. Ideally, with ray tracing enabled, you will want to turn on upscaling, and doing so hands the 7900 GRE a massive performance advantage at 1080p and 1440p, while the frame rates at 4K are much the same. Of course, FSR image quality probably isn't as good as DLSS at these lower resolutions, but for those of you who demand the upscaling results, that's just a subjective pitfall that you'll have to deal with. Now, F123 has been tested using the high preset, for the rasterization results, and here the 7900 GRE dominates, delivering 24% greater performance at 1080p, 27% at 1440p, and 23% at 4K. Then, if we enable the ultra high preset, which turns on ray tracing, the results end up being neck and neck. More crucially, though, the frame rates are more than halved for what is an extremely minor visual upgrade. So in my opinion, RTFX just aren't worth it in this title. Again, ray tracing really requires the aid of upscaling, but again, if we enable the quality upscaling modes, the Radeon GPU becomes quite dominant, delivering up to 17% better performance. Moving on to Forza Motorsport, we will again start with the raster results, as this time it's the GeForce GPU that gets up, at least at 1080p, and 1440p it was up to 9% faster. The margin at 4K, though, is negligible, as here the 4070 Super leads by just 4%. Now, this time enabling ray tracing does hand the 4070 Super an advantage, allowing it to render 12% more frames at 1080p, 15% more at 1440p, and then 11% more at 4K. Now, as we've found in the past, although Forza Motorsport supports FSR, it's completely broken. And by that I mean, well, it just doesn't work. And this is annoying because owners of the game have been complaining online about this issue for months now, and it's still broken. This also means that the 4070 Super is now 16% faster at 1080p, 21% faster at 1440p, and 20% faster at 4K. Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty is well optimized for both AMD and NVIDIA hardware. So unsurprisingly, we find similar performance when using the ultra quality preset. Both deliver acceptable performance at 1440p, but 4K will likely require some tweaking of the quality settings, or of course the use of upscaling. Now, with the ray tracing quality preset enabled, the performance isn't great. Well, it's not great with the 4070 Super, and it's downright terrible for the 7900 GRE, which could only muster 38 FPS at 1080p, making the GeForce GPU 61% faster. So, as usual, upscaling is required, and FSR was able to get the 7900 GRE to 61 FPS on average at just 1080p, making the 4070 Super 66% faster. 
The GeForce GPU also rendered 68 FPS at 1440p, making it 55% faster, which isn't too bad. Okay, Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered is another well-optimized title, and here both GPUs were able to max out the 7800X 3D at 1080p. Then at 1440p, the Jari hit the lead by a 9% margin, and then just 5% at 4K. It's worth noting that performance at all three tested resolutions was excellent. Even with ray tracing enabled, performance was still great and also very competitive with near enough to identical results seen at 1440p and 4K. And moreover, the game was perfectly enjoyable at 4K with just over 80 FPS. Then with upscaling enabled, which doesn't really feel necessary on these GPUs, at least at 1080p and 1440p, performance is again very competitive. In fact, we got the same 111 FPS for both products at 4K, Again, excellent performance overall in this title. Now, the second last game tested is Dying Light 2, and when using the high quality preset, performance was much the same using either GPU. The 7900 GRE offered slightly better 1% lows, but overall, the experience was much the same. Now, enabling ray tracing did favor the 4070 Super, allowing it to deliver 12% greater performance at 1080p, 14% at 1440p, and 18% at 4K. That said, at 1440p and 1080p, where frame rates were acceptable, the Radeon GPU offered a good enough experience. Then with upscaling enabled, we're able to achieve 60fps or more at 4K, and again, while the 4070 Super was 11% faster here, you could still happily play using the 7900 GRE. Finally, we have Hogwarts Legacy, and at 1080p and 1440p, the results are very similar. The 4070 Super delivered better 1% lows at 1080p, but the 7900 GRE was a bit more powerful at 4K. Enabling ray tracing didn't cripple the 7900 GRE, and although the GeForce GPU was faster, we're only talking about a 5% advantage at 1080p and 10% at 1440p, while performance at 4K is pretty broken for both models. Upscaling helped a lot at 4K, but even so, the frame time performance was still very poor, leading to a less than stellar experience. Then at 1080p and 1440p, both GPUs were CPU limited to around 70 FPS. Okay, now it's time to go over the average results, and we'll start with the rasterization data, which covers 25 games. At 1080p, the 7900 GRE was on average 8% slower than the 4070 Super, so in other words, performance was even overall. The GRE was strong in F123, while it was slower by double digits in Horizon Forbidden West, Ratchet and Clank, Helldivers 2, and Fortnite using the epic quality settings. Then at 1440p, the 7900GRE was 2% faster on average, so again, performance overall was pretty even. The Radeon GPU did well once again in F123, but also Counter Strike 2 with a 20% margin. Now at the 4K resolution, the GRE was 6% faster on average, with the only poor results seen in Helldivers 2. Other than that, the Radeon GPU was pretty dominant at this higher resolution. Now, if we quickly look at the rasterized results with upscaling enabled, we see that the GRE was 7% slower on average at 1080p, but we are looking at a smaller sample of games. So out of interest, if we look at the same sample of games without upscaling, the GRE was just 3% slower. So the RTX 4070 Super did fare better at 1080p with upscaling enabled. Looking at upscaling at 1440p, we see that the GRE was just 3% slower on average, so pretty close results there. But if we look at the same set of games at 1440p without upscaling, the GRE was actually 2% faster. So again, the GeForce GPU is benefiting more from upscaling. Then at 4K, the GRE is again 3% slower, ironically finding its only win in Avatar. And that's quite different to the 6% win it would have had without upscaling enabled. Okay, so now let's check out the ray tracing results, starting with the 1080p data. Overall, the 7900 GRE was just 14% slower on average, but the margins on a per game basis are pretty large, and all the big margins were well in favour of the 4070 Super, seen in Cyberpunk 2077, Ratchet and & Clank, and Alan Wake 2. The only other game where I believe the RT effects are fairly significant, at least out of this list of games, would be Fortnite, though it's not the style of game to showcase such a technology as it's best played on lower quality settings, that is assuming you want to do well and possibly get some wins outside of bot lobbies. Anyway, most of these games, such as F123 and Resident Evil 4, are the worst examples of ray tracing effects. 
they don't really look that much different with ray tracing enabled, it just tanks the frame rate. But again, this is true of most games that support ray tracing. There really are very few good examples. Jumping up to 1440p, we find that the 7900 GRE was 13% slower on average. And again, it's those key titles in Ratchet and Clank, Cyberpunk, and Alan Wake 2 where the Radeon GPU is significantly slower and was really only usable at 1080p, at least without upscaling. There are a few examples where frame rates hit acceptable levels at 4K with ray tracing enabled, and Hogwarts Legacy, Alan Wake 2, and Cyberpunk 2077 certainly weren't examples of that. Overall, the GRE was 9% slower here, but given the low frame rates for the most part, this data is a bit meaningless. Okay, so with upscaling enabled for the ray tracing data, we see that on average the 7900 GRE was 14% slower at 1080p, but again, there are a number of examples where it was slower by a 20% margin, and there are three examples where the margin blew out to 40%. Then at 1440p, we found the GRE was 12% slower on average, but for a number of these titles, performance even with upscaling was unacceptable on the Radeon GPU. Finally, at the 4K resolution, ray tracing performance, even with the aid of upscaling, wasn't really a thing. The 4070 Super, for example, averaged just 35 FPS in Cyberpunk, 21 FPS in Alan Wake 2, and 41 FPS in Ratchet and Clank. Okay, that really was a lot of data, and I'm sure I lost a few of you along the way. But for those of you who made it without skipping to this point of the video via the video index, well done. I appreciate you. Now, the question is which one of these GPUs should you buy and why? Starting with the rasterization performance, as we saw, there's really not a lot in it. Overall performance was much the same at 1080p and 1440p, with a 6% advantage going the way of the 7900GRE at 4K, which is nice given it's 9% cheaper and packs some extra VRAM. So if you primarily care about rasterization performance and the GRE happens to stand up well in the games that you're currently playing, it would be the better value option. That said, complicating things a little bit is upscaling, and if you're prone to employing upscaling, then the 4070 Super will close in on the GRE for these rasterization titles, and should do so with slightly better visual quality based on our recent investigations into DLSS versus FSR image quality. Then of course, there's ray tracing, and our opinions here haven't really changed since the introduction of the current generation GPUs. That is to say, if you care about ray tracing performance, you'd be best off ignoring Radeon GPUs altogether at this point in time. But opinions aside, the GeForce RTX 4070 Super was clearly superior in titles that are known to best showcase the ray tracing technology, such as Alan Wake 2 and Cyberpunk. Taking the 4070 Super as an example though, in order to play these titles at 1440p using ray tracing, you will require upscaling, and even then performance isn't always great. Alan Wake 2 played at just 42 FPS, which I guess you could argue is enough for that title, but it still felt a bit janky to me. Cyberpunk was much better at 68 FPS, certainly not amazing, and I'd personally rather play with ray tracing effects dialed down a bit for north of 100 FPS if that's possible, but if you're a single player visual buff, then it might be fine. Ratchet and Clank was quite good at 76 FPS, and I'd say for that particular title, that's a good enough frame rate. Outside of those titles though, I'm not really sure how many ray tracing enabled games there are where it's worth enabling the technology. We really do need to invest some time into an industry-wide investigation to determine just how many titles actually offer worthwhile ray tracing effects. The list of ray tracing supported games is now pretty massive, but in my experience it really does seem as though maybe 80% or possibly even more of what I've tested just shouldn't bother offering the option as all it does is smash your frame rate with no noticeable visual improvement. But maybe I'm wrong here, and this is why I want to spend a good amount of time this year analysing what's on offer. As a side note, I often see viewers commenting that they would purchase the GeForce GPU, as its ray tracing support makes it more future-proof. But that's simply not true. Instead, buy the 4070 Super to play what's on offer now, not what might be on offer in a few years, because chances are it won't be powerful enough to play those titles with any significant degree of RT effects enabled. For example, the usefulness of an RTX 2060 Super in today's best RT titles is questionable, and while I'm sure there are those that'll argue that with the right settings it works, there's no denying it's a highly compromised experience, and you've got to be pretty comfortable with 30fps gaming. 
So how much value should gamers place on ray tracing today, five years after the release of the GeForce 20 series? In my opinion, it's quite hard to say, and I think that in itself is a big problem. But to simplify the issue, if ray tracing support is important to you, at this point in time, just buy a GeForce GPU. Now, the only other noteworthy consideration in this matchup is VRAM capacity. The 4070 Super comes with just 12 gigabytes for $600, which is very weak in my opinion. At minimum, it should have been armed with 16 gigabytes like the 7900 GRE. But how important this will be moving forward is difficult to say. It's likely to become a factor if you're buying today in the hope of keeping it for the next three to four years. And I know that's a future-proofing angle, but as we've just seen with 4 gigabytes versus 8 gigabytes of VRAM, you can certainly utilize larger VRAM buffers with weaker GPUs. But the same won't be true for things like ray tracing. As a side note, if you care about power consumption, the 4070 Super is generally more power efficient, reducing total system usage by as much as 50 watts when gaming, which was a 13% power saving in our test system when playing Spider-Man though the GRE was also 9% faster. That said, it also increased total system power usage by 11% in Hitman 3 and was 8% slower. So the GeForce GPU is certainly more power efficient, it's just not a significant factor in my opinion. Of course, you can tinker with both models, either overclocking or undervolting, and in my experience, the 7900 GRE responds the best to either method. So if you are going to fine tune your graphics card, you might find even more value with the Radeon GPU. Finally, I should probably just touch on frame generation, as I didn't test the technology in this video, as it really doesn't belong on benchmark graphs. It's a frame smoothing technology, not an FPS boosting technology. It has been poorly marketed by both Nvidia and AMD to purposely mislead gamers. Both companies now support frame generation, we do believe that at present NVIDIA offers the superior version, so that is to say NVIDIA currently has the best frame smoothing technology. At the end of the day, it's my opinion that the 7900 GRE isn't super compelling for just $50 off. It's an 8% discount for similar rasterization performance, much worse RT performance in tiles where we think it counts, inferior upscaling technology, and weaker power efficiency. The only real ticks other than the $50 discount are the slightly better 4K results for rasterization performance and the extra four gigabytes of VRAM. The point is you could really go either way. And AMD's market share doesn't really put them in a position where they can afford for potential buyers to just go with the popular option. In any case, you should have all the information you need to make an informed purchase. And if that is indeed the case, then feel free to give the video a like. It was a lot of work. Subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to become a Harbour Unboxed member, you can get access to some pretty cool stuff for a relatively small price, very small price, certainly less than that of a 4070 Super or 7900 GRE. So that's, that's pretty good value. Might be some biased benchmarking there, but you will get access to our exclusive Discord server for members only, where you can talk tech and pretty much anything else, or sort of anything. We have rules, but it's a good server because, you know, anyway, behind the scenes content, Q and A's and monthly live streams. We do those on occasion. So yeah, check it out. Other than that though, I'm your host, Steve. Thanks for watching. See you next time.